Hello and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here at AWS reInvent, day three of our scintillating coverage here on theCUBE. I'm joined, I'm Savannah Peterson, joined by John Furrier. John, day three, energy's high, how are you feeling? I don't know, it's day two, day three, day four. It feels like day four, but again, we're back <laughs> to pre Who's counting? Pre-pandemic levels in terms of 50,000 plus people, hallways are packed, I got pictures of people don't believe it, it's actually happening, then people are back, so. You know, and then the economy is the big question too, and it's still, people are here, they're still building on the cloud, and cost is a big thing. This next segment's going to be really important. I'm looking forward to this next segment. Yeah, me too. Without further ado, let's welcome our guests for this segment. We have Brad from AMD, and we have Rahul from, you are, well, you do a, a variety of different things. <laughs> we'll, we'll start with CloudFix for this segment, but we could, we could talk about your multiple hats all day long. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. How you doing? Thank Brad, you. how does it feel? We love seeing your logo above our stage here. Oh, look, <laughs> we love this. And, and talking about reInvent last year, the energy this year compared to last year is so much, so much bigger. We love it. We're excited to be here. Yeah, that's awesome. Raul, how are you feeling? Excellent. I mean, I, I think this is my eighth or ninth reInvent at this point, and it's been fabulous. I think the, the crowd, the engagement, it, it's awesome. You wouldn't know there's a looming recession if you look at the activity, and, but yet still, the reality is here. We had an analyst on yesterday, we were talking about spend more in the cloud, save more. So that you can still yeah. use the cloud, and there's a lot of right sizing. I call, you got to turn the lights off before you go to bed. Kind of watch your, be more efficient with your infrastructure as a theme. This reInvent is a lot, of, a lot more about that now before. Before right. it's like the glory days. Yeah, hey, yeah, keep building. Now with a little bit of pressure, this is the conversation. Exactly, and I think most companies are looking to figure out how to innovate their way out of this uncertainty that's kind of on, you know, on everyone's head. And the only way to do it is to be able to be more efficient with whatever your existing spend is, take those savings and then apply them to innovating you know, on new stuff. And it's, that's, that's the way to go about it at this point. I think it's it's such a hot topic it, for everyone that we're talking about. I mean, total cost optimization, figuring out ways to be more efficient. I know that that's a big part of your mission at CloudFix. So just in right. case the audience isn't first, give us the pitch. Okay, so here, a little bit of background on this. So the other hat I wear is CTO of ESW Capital. We have about 150 enterprise software companies within the portfolio. Wow. Um, and one of my jobs is also to manage and run about 40 to 45,000 AWS accounts of our own. And Casual I, number, just a few, <laughs> just a couple, <laughs> pocket change, you know, no big deal. And like everyone else here in the audience, yeah, we had a problem with our costs, you know, just going out of control. And as we were looking at a lot of the tools to help us kind of get more efficient, one of the biggest issues was that while people give you a lot of recommendations, recommendations are way too far from realized savings. Okay, and we were running through the challenge of how do you take recommendations and turn them into real savings? And multiple different hurdles, the short story being, we had to create CloudFix to actually realize those savings. So we took AWS recommendations around cost, filtered them down to the ones that are completely non-disruptive in nature, implemented those as simple automations that everyone can just run and realize the savings right away. We then took those savings and then started applying them to innovating and you know, doing new interesting things with that money. Is there a best practice in your mind that you see emerging in this time? People start to be more focused on it. Is there a, a method or a purpose, kind of best practice of how to approach the cost optimization? I think one of the things that most people don't realize is that cost optimization is not a one and done thing. Mm. It is literally non-stop. Right. Which means that, you know, on one hand, AWS is constantly creating new services. There are over 100,000 API at this point of time. Right, how to use Another them right, how number. to use them efficiently. A little bit of scale on the show today. You also have a problem of choice. Developers are constantly discovering new services, discovering new ways to utilize them. And they are behaving in ways that you had not anticipated before. So you have to stay on top of things all the time. And really the only way to, to kind of stay on top is to have automation that helps you stay on top of all of these things. So yeah, finding efficiencies, standardizing your, your practices about how you leverage these AWS services and then automating the governance and uh, hygiene around how you utilize them is really the key. Brad, tell me what this means for AMD and, and what working with CloudFix and Rahul does for your customers. Oh, well, um, you know, the, the idea of efficiency and cost optimization is near and dear to our heart. We have the uh, leading... <laughs> it's near and dear to everyone's heart right <laughs> I know, now. Right, right now it is for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, we, uh, you know, it, we are the leaders in x86 price performance and density 
and power efficiency. So this is something that's actually part of our core, core, core culture. We've been doing this a long time. And what's interesting is most companies don't understand how much more efficiency they can get out of their applications, aside right. from just the choices they make in cloud. And, yeah. But that's the one thing, the message we're giving everybody is choice matters very much when it comes to your cloud solutions. And just deciding what type of instance types you choose can have a massive impact on your, um, your, your bottom line. And so uh, we are excited to partner with, with CloudFix. They've got a great model for this. And they make it very easy for our customers to help identify those areas. And then AMD can come in as well and then help uh, uh, provide additional insight into those applications, what else they can squeeze out of it. So it's a great relationship. So if I, get, like if, I hear you, if I hear you correctly then, there's more choice for the customers, faster selection. So no bad choices means bad performance. If they have a workload or an app that needs to run, is that where you kind of get into the, is that where it is or more? Well, I mean, off? from the AMD side right now, you know, one of the things they do very quickly is they identify where the, the low hanging fruit is. So the yeah. thing about x86 compatibility, you can, you can shift instance types instantly in most cases without yeah. any change to your environment at all, and CloudFix has an automated tool to do that. And that's Pretty one thing, you can, you can immediately have an impact on your cost without having to, really, to do any work at all, and customers love that. What's the alternative if this doesn't exist? They have um, to go manually figure it out, or they kiss them in the face, or they see the numbers don't work, or what's the alternative? If you don't have the tool to automate, what's the customer's experience? The alternative is that you actually have people look at every single instance of usage of resources and try and figure out how to do this. At cloud scale, that just doesn't yeah. make sense. You just There's can't get around to it. There's too many different options, too. Correct. Correct. It's, and yeah. the reality is that your resources, your human resources, are literally your most expensive yeah. part of your budget. You want to leverage all the amazing people you have, to do the amazing work. So you free and up this people. this is not amazing work, this is mundane, So simple. you free up all the people exactly. time. Correct, you free up wasting their time and resources on doing something that's mundane, simple, and should be automated because that's the only way you scale. I think of you as like a little helper in the background helping me save money while I'm not thinking about it. You know, it's like a good fi financial planner making you money since we're talking about the economy. Pretty much. The yeah. other analogy that I give to all the technologists is this is like garbage collection, you know, yeah. like, for most languages when you are coding, you know, you, you have these new languages that do garbage collection for you, you don't do memory management and stuff. The developers back in the day used to do that. Why do that when you can have technology do that in an automated manner for you in an optimal way? So, yeah. just kind of freeing up your developers' time from yeah. doing this stuff that's mundane, and it's a standard best practice. One of the things that we leverage AMD for is they've helped us uh, define the process of seamlessly migrating folks over to AMD-based you know, instances without any major disruptions or trying to minimize every aspect of disruption. So all the best practices are kind of borrowed from them, yeah. borrowed from AWS in most other cases, and we basically put them in the automation so that you don't ever have to worry about that stuff. Well, you're getting so much data, you have the opportunity to really streamline. I mean, I love this, because you can look across industry, across verticals, and behavior of what other folks are doing, learn from that, and apply that in the background to all your different customers. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so how big is how big's the company? How big's the team? So, it's, we have uh, people in about 130 different countries. <laughs> wow. uh, so we've completely been remote and global, and actually the cloud has been one of the big enablers yeah. of that. Uh, that's and awesome, <laughs> 130 countries, sheesh. And that's the best AMP part of it, I was just too. telling Brad a short while ago. That's allowed us to hire the best talent from across the world and they spend their time building new amazing products and new solutions instead of doing all this other mundane stuff. So we are big believers in automation, not only for our world. And once our customers started asking us about, or telling us about the same problem that they were having, that's when we actually took what we had internally for our own purpose, yep. we packaged it up as CloudFix and launched it last year at reInvent. If yeah. customers aren't thinking about automation, then they're going to probably have a struggle. They're going to probably struggle. I mean, with more data coming in, you see the data story here, more data's coming in, more automation. And this year, Brad, price performance is, on, and I've heard the word price performance more this year at reInvent than any other year. I've heard it before, but this year, price performance. Not performance, yeah. price performance. So yeah. you're starting to hear that dialogue of, you know, squeeze, understand, the use cases, use the right specialized processor, instance, start to see that evolve. Yeah, and, and there's, there's so much to it. I mean, AMD right out of the box is, uh, any instance is 10% uh, less expensive than the, uh, uh, the, the equivalent in the market right now uh, on AWS. They do a great job of maximizing those, those products. We've got our, our, um, our Zen 4 core, 
General Processor family just released in November, and it's going to be Congrats. a beast. Thank yes. you. Yeah, we're very, we're exciting. very excited about yeah. it. And AWS announced support for it, so we're excited to, to see what they deliver there too. But price performance is so critical, and again, it's going back to the complexity of these environments, yeah. giving some of these enterprises totally. some help to help them understand where they can get additional value. It goes well beyond yeah. the, the retail price. There's a lot more money to be, uh, to be shaved off the top just by spending time thinking about those applications. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that you talked about collaboration. We've been talking about community. I want to acknowledge the AWS super fans here standing behind <laughs> the stage. Hi, y'all. Rahul, I know that you are an AWS super fan. Can you tell us about that community and the program? Yeah, so I have been involved with uh, AWS and building products with AWS since 2007. So it's kind of 15 years. Back when literally there were just a handful of API for launching EC2 instances and S3. Not the 100,000 that you yeah, mentioned earlier. 100, My goodness, the scale. So I think I feel very privileged and honored that I have been part of that journey and have had to learn, or have had the opportunity to learn, both from successes and failures. And it's just my way of you know, contributing back to that community. So uh, we're part of the FinOps Foundation as yeah. well, contributing through that. I run a podcast called AWS Insiders and a live stream called AWS Made Easy. So we are trying to make sure that people out there are able to understand how to leverage AWS in the best possible way. Real, and, go ahead. Yeah, and yeah, uh, we are there to help and uh, yeah. you know hold their hand through it. Talk about the community. Take a minute to explain to the audience watching the community around this cost optimization area. It's evolving. You mentioned FinOps. Yeah. There's a whole large community developing of practitioners yes. and technologists coming together to look at this. What does this all mean? Mm. Talk yes. about this community. So, uh, cost management within organizations is, has evolved so drastically that organizations haven't really coped with it, okay? You, historically, you've had finance teams basically buy a lot of infrastructure, which was CapEx, and the engineering teams had kind of an upper bound on what they would spend and where they would spend. Suddenly with cloud, that's kind of enabled so much innovation all of a sudden. Everyone wants, everyone's realized it. You know, five years were spent, figuring out whether they, people should be on the cloud or not, that's no longer a question. Right. Everyone needs to be in the cloud, and I think that's, that's a no-brainer. The problem there is that suddenly your operating model has moved from CapEx to OpEx, and organizations haven't really figured out how to deal with it, right? Finance now lo no longer has the controls to control and manage and forecast costs. Engineering has never had to deal with it in the past, and suddenly now they have to figure out how to do all this finance stuff and procurement finds itself in a very awkward way, in an awkward position because they are no longer doing these negotiations like they were doing in the past where it was, okay, right up front before you engage, you do these negotiations. Now it's kind of an ongoing thing and it's constantly changing, like every day is different. So I and, think you got market, and you got marketplace. And you got marketplace. So it's, <laughs> it's a very complex situation and I think what we're trying to do with the FinOps Foundation is try and take a lot of the best practices across organizations that have been doing this at least for the last 10, 15 years, take all the learnings and failures and turn them into hopefully opinionated approaches that people can take, uh, organizations can take to navigate through this faster uh, rather than kind of falter and then decide that, oh, this is not for us. Yeah, it's a great model. Yeah, it's a great model. All right, Fast balance. Decision. I know, it's time, John. Go all ahead, right. team up. All right, so <laughs> team up. we got a little bumper sticker exercise. We used to say, what's the bumper sticker for the show? We used to say that. Now we're modernizing, we're saying, if you had to do an Instagram reel right now, a short, hot take of what's going on at reInvent this year with AMD or Cloudflare, or just in general, what Your would thought be, leadership what, sizzle. What would be the sizzle, you want to go for sizzle reel? I feel like Brad's got That would be on Instagram or TikTok, <laughs> go. Yeah. Look, I think when you're a reInvent right now, number one, the energy is fantastic. 23 is going to be a building year, right? We've got so, a lot of difficult times ahead financially, but it's the time the ones that come out of 23 stronger and more efficient, right, and cost optimized, are going to survive the long run, right? So now's the time to build. Correct. Well done, Raul, <laughs> let's go for it. Yeah, so like Brad said, cost and efficiency is at the top of everyone's mind. Stuff that's the low hanging fruit, easy, use automation, apply your resources to do most of the innovation, take the easiest path to realizing savings and operate as efficiently as you possibly can. I think that's going to be key. Yeah, I nailed think they it. nailed it. They, nailed they it. both nailed it. Nailed Great job, it. well done. Wow, well it was really we put you on our talent list of... Uh, and all right, so we recruit you know. them? Are they, are they <laughs> a new part of our host team? Of course, I love this. Of course. I absolutely, absolutely love this. Rahul, we wish you the best at CloudFix and your 17 other jobs. <laughs> and I, I am genuinely impressed. Do you sleep, actually? Last question. I do, I do. I have an amazing team. 
uh, that really helps me with all of this. All right. So yeah, thanks to them, yeah. and thank you for having us here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's fantastic. our pleasure. And Brad, I'm delighted we get you both now and again on our next segment. Thank you for happy being to be here. With us. Thank you very much. And thank you all for tuning in to our live coverage here at AWS reInvent in fabulous Sin City with John Furrier. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leader in high tech coverage.